Hassan Campbell recently made a video and he was talking about a friend of his, a homie that he knew that wasn't about that life. And the young homie was killed. He was shot twice in the head and once in the neck, according to Hassan. Now, I want to piggyback off of Hassan Campbell. Pause. I want to make a response video to Hassan Campbell's video because I really don't think a lot of the listeners to that video got what he was saying. When he was saying that the young man was a punk, he was a pussy. He wasn't about that life. Now, there's some people in the comment section that felt that he disrespected the young man, his friend, by calling him a pussy or a punk or saying that he wasn't about that life. It's quite interesting to me that these people will be offended by that and feel that Hassan Campbell disrespected the young man in his death when someone had just got done talking about preachers and how preachers don't tell the truth and how preachers know that a person is wicked been wicked all their life but yet when the preacher does the eulogy he has all of these flowery things to say about that young man so it's the same thing when it comes to Hassan Campbell. He was just being real. Because you have some dudes, a lot of dudes, that's not really about that life. They are good dudes. But for some reason, we're living in a time where good dudes want to portray themselves as being a bad boy. It could be to get the women because you have females that's attracted to that. Now, I really don't understand why a dude would want to become a bad boy to please a female. He might want to hit it, but yet there's a price that comes along with that. You have dudes that want to play that lifestyle without actually putting in the work. They've never been locked up behind bars. They've never been in trouble with the law. They try to sell drugs. They try to sell weed. They sag their pants. They try to be a bad boy. But when it really comes down to it, when shit hit the fan, they're really not about that life. I know dudes that grew up in two parent homes, was raised to be good dudes, productive productive young men in society but they allow the negative sector of society to put a battery in their back be it a female be it their so-called friends in the street and they felt in order to fit in they had to try to uh, put on this facade that they were a bad boy that they were a thug but at the end of the day they say the good guy is always the one that end up getting killed first. See, the good guy is always the one that end up paying the price. Because, see, there's an invisible realm that many of us choose not to believe or claim that we don't believe. That's always in work. It's always working. It's always activated. This invisible realm. There's always been a struggle between good and evil. You're going to always have the good side trying to recruit someone from the bad side. And then you're going to have the bad side. That's going to make things look very compelling. For a better term. And they're going to try to recruit the good guys. Only to set the good guy up for hell because if you listen to a lot of these these dudes that grew up and they were about that life they really don't want to be about that life that's a lifestyle that's a condition that they didn't choose that they grew up in maybe because of their parents both parents are on drugs or both parents locked up or their dad got killed 
And you have so many young dudes, man, in the black community that feel that it's a curse to be a good dude. They are not about that life. See, so they hate themselves. These young dudes, man, they hate themselves because they are naturally good people. They are good people. They are not about that life. They're not thugs. They're educated because of how their family was brought up. So then what they do is they try to put out this facade that the dad was never there for them. When they grew up in the house with their dad. They put out there that their dad was a bad guy. Dad always protected them. Dad always provided for them. And see what a lot of young dudes now have. They watch TV. And they have a misconception of what a father is. Now they see the TV fathers. That would sit down and say son. This is what life is about. See you really can't. School a person on what life is about. You can only share your experiences and you can warn them of possible danger that might be ahead. And it's left up to them whether or not they're going to continue to walk inside into that danger or they're going to retreat. They're going to back off. And just because you retreat does not mean that you are a punk. It means that you're smart, that you're using your head. And you have a lot of bad dudes that envy good dudes. And then you have the good dudes that envy the lifestyle or the swag of the bad dude. Because it seemed like the bad boy always get the girls. He looked tough. People fear him. Where is the good dude? Manhood. Being good does not make you weak. See, you can be good. You can be a good dude. You can be a nerd. You can be a pussy without being a pussy. Because you, they would think that you're a pussy because you're a nice guy. Because you smile. Because you care about how you conduct yourself in your life. You take care of your family. You pay your bills. You be responsible. You go to school. So you're going to have the bad boy... That's going to envy you in a way. But yet he's going to make your lifestyle look bad. And make you despise your lifestyle. And then you have females that are threatened by good dudes. Because they can't gain that power control over them. See there's a lot of females out there that love the bad boy. Because the bad boy... End up in trouble. He end up in prison. She's sending him care package. Now she's in control. She's in power. So when he gets out, he now lives with her. Gives him the false sense of security to make him think that he's the man and he's being the man. And then when she gets mad at him, she either kick him out. She call his PO officer. Threaten to have him sit back to jail. You talk to the average brother to go to prison. And you ask him, is it fun in prison? Do you really want to be there? You talk to the average brother that's about that life. That's seen their homies get killed. That's being haunted. Every single day and night of their life. Of the blood that they shed in the streets. You ask those brothers if the haunt. Does not. Control their emotion and mind. And they try to hide it. They try to bury it. Because they can still, they're going to always see the image of the life they took. They're going to hear the cries of that person. They're going to see the expression on that person's face. They're going to see the bloodshed. The life that they took. That's something that's scarred on their soul. But yet you have good dudes that envy that. They envy the bad dude. So a lot of people really, what Hassan Campbell said went over a lot of people's head, man. Because they may have praised them. Oh, you're a good dude. You're this, you're that. But you're not really hearing what the brother's saying. He's saying this young dude, they didn't have to kill him. He was a good dude. He wasn't about that life. He was a nerd. He put out that fake facade. Or he might have been, he might have joined the gang. 
See, let me let me explain something to you young brothers out there, you good brothers out there that grew up in, in good homes. You know, even if you grew up in a single parent home, there's moms out there that raise their children well, respectfully, right? And then they have to go out into the society and deal with life, good and bad, that struggle of good and evil. But let me explain something to you brothers out there. That's nerds. That's a good dude. That's a square. Listen, you could be a good dude and not be a punk. See, there's good dudes out there that's good with their hands. They box, they wrestle. They're into the martial arts or mixed martial arts. They lift weights. They run. They in shape. So if they need to throw hands to defend themselves or their family or their girlfriend, they ready. Right. They're ready to defend themselves, but the good dudes at heart. See, I remember and I'm going to close the video out because I might run out of space here. But I remember when I was growing up, I'm, I'm I was somewhat a nerd, man. I was into my art, man. I'm a good dude. I wasn't about that life. But I, I wrestled. I was into the arts, the martial arts. Right. I was into weightlifting. Right. So I knew how to handle myself. And there was one time one dude approached me, man, and I knew I could take the dude, right? And he called himself or trying to act like a thug. And I did like an inside crescent kick, right? Just enough to brush his nose and his eyes opened up. That was a warning just to let him know, if I wanted to take you down, I can, right? And his, he just like just shook because all he saw was that foot go across his face, just enough to skin his nose, right? So you have dudes out there, man, that are good dudes and they can handle themselves. They like wear an unseen sign that says, don't tread on me. See the windows, your eyes are the windows to your soul. You can look in a dude's eyes and tell if you can mess with him or not. You know, you can look at a dude's eyes, you know exactly who to mess with and who don't. And there's dudes that I've dealt with, man, in my past coming up that looked at me as uh, a nerd or uh, as a square. And they got the beat down. Next, you know, I would have fund them, had them. Back in the day, man, we earth slam them, right? Slam them on their head. Went up under them, blam, slam them, surprise them. And then I cradled him, you know, I pent him and cradled him. And he got up shocked. He didn't expect that. He didn't expect me to be that strong. But yet, I was quiet. The girls, when I met some of the females, man, and listen, brothers, them good dudes out there, listen, that's a hidden jewel, bro. That's a hidden jewel. You don't know your goodness is a hidden jewel, especially if you're quiet. You know, you know how to throw the rap line down, man. You know how to get the girls. And I had females, man, that used to always tell me, you shy, aren't you? Aren't you bashful? You bashful. You seem bashful. And I tell them, I said, no, I'm not bashful. You know, you're so quiet. They used to tell me that when I was coming up, right? So, um, but if you're not strong and secure within yourself, you're going to look at that as a weakness. And then you're going to feel you need to, you know, slap them around and, you know, just kind of yank them up and whatnot to let the girl know, I'm a man. You don't talk to me that way. No, nah, that's not how you handle it. That's not how you handle it, bro. I know there's some dude out there that did it. And unfortunately, there's females out there, man, the only way that the female will respect you if you exert that kind of authority. And I shared in the video in the past, man, where I had this woman tell me that she wanted me to slap her around. She said, if I get out of if I get out of if I get out of line, just slap me around a little bit. I cut that chick loose quick. I told her, I said, nah, I, said, I ain't never I got I got four sisters. I ain't never hit no women in my life and I would not tolerate a dude putting their hands on my on my sister so I'm not gonna put my hands on you and she said you know if I get out of line just slap me around a little bit I'm not gonna do that I cut that chick loose man because she's not sane up here see you have a lot of females out there and this is a different video you have a lot of females out there a lot of black females with mental health issues and you have dudes that's getting with these chicks Producing children with these chicks and then these kids then they produce like Half crazy kids and you wonder why these kids grow up 
with a few screws missing in their head, man, because they had a crazy mama or crazy daddy. They said somebody that had mental health issues. And the only thing the dude could see is the girl had a fat behind and a pretty smile. And she was giving it up. She was a thought. That's all he saw. He wasn't thinking about the consequences. See, but a lot of good dudes think about consequences, man. That's what saves you. See, that, that is what saves you when you think about consequences, man, of your actions and the choices that you make in life. So there's a lot of dudes out there, a lot of good dudes, man, that hate themselves, that despise themselves because they're good. And they really know in the heart of hearts, man, that they are not about that life. And then the dudes that you try to hang out with, you hang on the block with, they know you ain't about that life. And Hassan Campbell used an example, like in a movie, I think it was Boys, was it Boys in the Hood? Where Trey got in the car and he wasn't about that life and they was about ready to put in some work. And he was like, let me out, let me out. And his boys knew that he wasn't about that life. Let me out. And he got out. See, so a lot of a lot of what Hassan Campbell said went over people's head, man, because you got people out there that don't like the brother, you know. But yet wisdom comes in many forms and from different places. Places that you won't even expect. It can be your worst enemy. Person that you hate. Wisdom comes from that person and the wisdom of that person the knowledge of that person the message that come through that person you may despise that person but that person may give you a message that could save your life and if you're not wise and if you don't have a battery in your back that a, a female put in your back or one of your homeboys put the battery in your back if you don't have that battery and your mind is not controlled by something or someone outside yourself, then you're able to hear that, man. You're here able to hear that jewel. But see, people that's got batteries in their backs, that's ignorant, they're gonna the only thing they're gonna see is the fact, I don't like this person, this is what this person did. So I'm not gonna hear what this person gotta say. Although the message that's coming through that person could save their life. See, you never know. When the most high would speak. I did a video on my. Um, my storm channel. My warrior storm channel. That talked about. Bailiff. The bailiff and the, and the talking donkey. In the bible. And how the God allowed the donkey. To see the danger. The impending danger. And Balak. Because of the fact that he was. Carnal minded man. He was beating the donkey, man, and, and punishing the donkey for a message that was coming through from the Most High. See, so if, the, if God is able to speak through an ass, through a donkey, and a lot of time an ass is not an animal. It could be the person that you have an issue with or a person that's got an issue with you.